Good morning, everybody. My name is Michael Fiebig with Fiebig Architecture, and today we are going to be learning about fire resistance rated joint systems, specifically as regulated under the 2021 IBC. Um, and uh, in addition to being a licensed architect, I am a certified fire protection specialist. So uh, bringing this, this uh, um, knowledge on fire protection systems into the practice of architecture, uh, specifically today to talk about fire resistance rated joint systems. So what is what, what are uh, fire rated joint systems? This is where the joints in differing systems meet um, that require fire protection to the same degree that the assemblies themselves require fire protection. So first and foremost, we're talking about fire resistance rated construction, things like fire rated walls, fire rated floors, fire rated roofs, uh, the fire resistance rated joint systems, these are the materials that are used at the joints where these different assemblies intersect. Under the 2021 IBC, we are in chapter seven. This is fire and smoke protection features, section 715, uh, which is titled joints and voids. And specifically, we're gonna be talking about the joints. So let's go ahead and, and read what, uh, the, what this is out of the code. Uh, section 715.3, fire resistance rated assembly intersections, and it says joints installed in or between fire resistance rated walls, floor or floor ceiling assemblies and roofs or roof ceiling assemblies shall be protected by an approved fire resistant joint system designed to resist the passage of fire for a time period not less than the required fire resistance rating of the wall, uh, floor or roof in between uh, the system is installed. And the criteria for this assembly, uh, which is in section 715.3.1, says fire resistant joint systems shall be tested in accordance with the requirements of ASTM E1966 or UL2079. So a couple of important things to uh, take away from this is that the in addition to the actual uh, assemblies being rated uh, for certain periods of time, uh, for example, one hour rated construction, two hour rated construction, et cetera, the actual joints themselves also must be independently tested um, to the same degree. And, and that ASTM test is, is E1966, which we'll, uh, we'll get into a little bit later. Um, but first, first thing, uh, before we get to that, uh, let's recall that in, in the code, when you see terms um, such as we see in italics here, joints is in italics, fire resistant joint systems is in italics, fire resistance rating is in italics. When you see terms in italics in the code, that means these are defined terms. And so you can actually glean uh, useful information by, by actually going to the definition. So let's do that. Um, the word joint in this context defined as the opening in or between adjacent assemblies created due to building tolerances or is designed to allow independent movement of the building in any plane caused by thermal seismic wind or any other loading. And then, um, so that's just a fancy way of just basically talking about the intersections of these different assemblies. And the fire resistant joint system as defined, um, the definition is an assemblage of specific materials or products that are designed, tested, and fire resistance rated in accordance with UL with ASTM E1966 or UL2079. So again, even in the definition of fire resistant joint system, it ties you to ASTM E1966. So this is this is very important. Um, it's a very important part of of a properly tested and recognized joint system. Um, and just just as a, a quick side, the, the the difference between ASTM E1966 and UL2079, they're essentially the same. Um, there may be a few very minor differences, but for the most part, they're, they're the same test. And, and if you want, you can look those up and, and see it for yourself. But let's talk about ASTM E1966. So let's understand exactly what, what this test requires, since the code does require these joints to be tested According to this standard, let's let's see what this standard uh, says. So ASTM E1966, this is the standard test method for fire resistive joint systems. And um, looking at the beginning of this of this uh, standard, 
under scope. Um, let's look at 1.1 says this fire test response test method measures the performance of joint systems designed to be used with fire rated floors and walls during a fire endurance test exposure. The fire endurance test endpoint is the period of time elapsing before the first performance criteria is reached when the joint system is subjected to one of two time temperature fire exposures. And then um, uh, 1.4 says test results establish the performance of joint systems during the fire exposure period. So that, that's kind of the, the, the scope and intent uh, of this test is to, is to make sure that, that these joint systems are, are suitable for their intended purpose. Now, let's go over quickly the conditions of compliance. There's five of them. And so these conditions of compliance, these are the things that the joints need to be able to uh, uh, be passed pass the test in order to uh, uh, to be a compliant joint, and the first one is the movement cycling test, because it's a it's a joint um, typically comprised of of a fire rated sealant of of one kind or another, and some some backing materials and other accessory materials. Um, joint movement is important to consider because under under the thermal stresses of a fire or structural stresses that that can uh, be. Uh, in, in fire conditions, these joints are, are going to uh, reasonably be expected to be exposed to some movement. So the, the joint needs to be able to accommodate that movement without, without failure. So movement cycling test basically means that the joint is able to be uh, stretched and moved, uh, but to maintain, maintain a fire resistant joint uh, under, under movement cycling. And then the second test is the fire endurance test. This one is pretty easy to understand. It basically means that the fire rated joint needs to endure uh, the fire test for the specified amount of time. So again, for a one hour test, the joint must, ex must uh, endure one hour of fire exposure. For a two hour requirement, it'd be a two hour fire exposure, three hours and so on and so forth. <clears throat> um, the next, three tests. We've got the integrity test. The integrity test, um, as you can see in the description, it talks about a cotton pad. It says when the cotton pad test is conducted, the fire resistive joint system shall not have allowed the passage of flames or hot gases sufficient to ignite the cotton pad. So the, the, when they say the integrity test, it's think of it like the uh, integrity of the joint to protect the other side. So you, they put a cotton pad on the opposite side of the joint, and if if heat or fire, uh, flames or hot gases have been able to penetrate through the joint sufficient to ignite the cotton on the other side, then the integrity of the joint has failed. So the the, the test must um, must pass the integrity test. Then there's load application. This is for load bearing um, assemblies. Uh, under structural loading conditions, um, there are there are when it comes to fire resistance rated floors and wall systems, there there are non load bearing wall rated partitions and walls, and then there are load bearing walls. So if it if it's a load if it's if if it's a load bearing application, then obviously the joint needs to be able to accommodate the structural loads that are applied as part of the test. And uh, it simply requires that the joint system shall have sustained the applied load for the full resistance period. And then we have the hose stream test, which uh, is in the context of like an active firefighting operation where the firefighters are spraying water uh, in and around the building. The idea is that the joint needs to be able to withstand a, a stream of water from the, hose, from the fire hose without the hose actually damaging or uh, uh, destroying the joint. So the hose stream test, it says that the fire resistive joint system shall have withstood the hose stream test without developing any openings that permits a projection of water from the stream beyond the unexposed surface. So the, those are the five um, tests that need to be passed for a, for a compliant fire resistance rated joint system. And just as a side note, these are very similar to the tests required for ASTM E119. And, and the E119 test is the standard test method for the fire test uh, of building construction and materials. So 
while the actual walls and floors and roofs, those are gonna be fire tested to E119, the joint, um, the joint is tested to ASTM E1966. But if you look through E119, you'll see things like the hose stream test is there, the fire endurance test is there. Um, I believe they, they don't call it the integrity test, but I think they, I believe they call it the heat transfer test, which basically limits the amount of heat that is able to transfer through the assembly. Um, but they're very similar. So here's an example of a fire resistance rated joint detail. This particular um, example is a, a load bearing two hour rated fire barrier wall. And the fire barrier wall, you can see we've got a, a uh, joint at the bottom, we've got a joint at the top, and those are both tied to specific joint details. Um, we can see the bottom of wall joint test, this was detailed to be the uh, ULBWS0002 system. And so this is the actual UL spec. You can, you can see the, uh, uh, the components of the base of the wall um, illustrated in the detail and then written out their specifications uh, in the UL assembly. And uh, can you guess what the BW stands for? Well, it's bottom, bottom of wall or base of wall. So BW, bottom of wall system. Now let's look at a top, a top of wall joint. This is the UL design HWD0262. Um, very similar to the bottom of wall detail, that this top of wall detail, it's got the illustration from the UL and then all the different call outs for all the different materials. And again, this is, this is pulled from the UL. This is the UL tested assembly. And what does the HW stand for? What do you think? Well, head of wall. So BW, bottom of wall, HW, head of wall, they make it pretty easy to understand what, what we're talking about and where we need these joints to be, um, uh, to be specified. So uh, additional UL information, this is very important uh, for all you architects and designers out there. Uh, pay attention to the UL general notes. There's a, there are, Lots of very important points and lots of important information that the UL makes in these uh, general notes. And um, what we can see here, just in this little snippet, th this is from the 2016 Fire Resistance Directory. There, there's a, a, a designation of XHBN that designates fire resistant joint systems. And what you'll see in uh, the subsection for walls and partitions, the second part of this of this uh, uh, regulation says where dynamic movement is specified in joint systems that utilize a U400, V400, or W400 series fire resistance rated wall and partition assemblies, the special features of the walls to accommodate dynamic movement are intended to be as specified in the individual designs under XHBN. So this is very very important because what this what this means is that the actual wall or partition assembly itself may have a different head sill spec than the joint. So if if the and what the UL is basically saying here is that if if you have a dynamic movement joint, then you need to make sure that you follow the XHBN, which is the fire resistant joint system criteria, not just the partition criteria from the U400, V400, or W400 series rated walls. So let, let's take a look at an example of this. So here's UL design U465. This is a non-bearing wall. It's a one hour rated wall and it's, it's steel studs and gypsum board. And what we can see in this partition assembly, uh, floor and ceiling runners not shown. It does uh, include, it gives a description of, of the floor and ceiling runners, but it, it says that they are attached to the floor and ceiling with fasteners spaced 24 inches on center. So that's that's just from the partition itself. But what if dynamic movement is required? So in this case, we're looking at a head wall joint HWD0262. Here's the, the head of wall joint. And um, it is a, a movement. It, it does allow dynamic movement. This can allow, think of like a slip head track or a a, a top of wall uh, track system that, that can accommodate some deflection, which is a very common requirement. 
In this particular case, the detail says the floor and ceiling runners, um, uh, it gives the criteria for the runners, but specifically you'll see that the ceiling runner are to be spaced maximum of 12 inches. So this is different than the partition itself. The partition said 24 inches, but the actual head joint requires 12. And that's because the partition itself, that wall was tested to the rating of the actual wall. That particular test wasn't intended to, um, to test the, the, a dynamic head joint. And so the dynamic head joint detail per, per the UL, this will supersede the requirements of the partition because this dynamic head joint uh, assembly does accommodate movement. And as tested, it required fasteners twice that, that was, would have been required in a, a, a rated partition that does not require dynamic movement. So uh, you can conclude from that, that under fire conditions, the dynamic head uh, detail requires more fasteners to be uh, robust and hold up under fire, actual fire conditions. And so in this case, the uh, proper detail would, would include um, a specification of fasteners every 12 inches on center, not, not 24. So this, this is very important as an architect or a designer that you are aware of this. And for contractors and builders out there, um, if you're working on a, a project where you have fire rated walls and, and uh, head joints, make sure that the proper, the proper system is, is, uh, is being installed. So a couple of takeaways here. Uh, fire rated joints are separate systems distinct from the rated assemblies that they protect. So that, that's very, very important. These are unique and distinct systems. The, the, joint, the best way to think about it, just keep in mind, the joints are, um, they, they, are they have to be individually specified for any given project to the same degree that the, the actual rated partitions and assemblies have to. And then number two is that a tested joint system is required to be specified. You saw that in the definition of fire resistance rated joint system. It actually says that it has been tested in accordance with ASTM uh, 1966. That, that means that you can't just, you can't just specify um, like generic fire caulking and be done with it and just say, here's a bead of, of one hour fire caulking and that's my joint. It actually has to be tested. So you need to make sure that um, where, where necessary that an actual tested system is specified. And then third big takeaway is if dynamic movement is a relevant factor in the design, the details of the joint system overrule the details of the standard wall partition most times. Now, again, we saw in the UL that that was limited to the U400, V400, and other 400 series tests, but it's very important to keep that in mind, that if, if, if your uh, wall criteria is, is of, of that type, and those are, those are where most of them are, that if, if you look through the UL handbook, um, a great majority of, of the types of wall systems that are conventionally used are going to be in, in those categories. So make sure that uh, as an architect, your details match uh, or that the, the correct detail is being used for the head joint versus the uh, standard partition without the tested joint. And then uh, again, contractors, just be aware that there are, there may be uh, differing requirements and, and make sure that, that you understand which one is, uh, is the, is the uh, prevailing detail to be used. So that's it uh, for this lesson. I, I do hope that uh, our quick, to uh, quick topic of studying fire resistant joint systems has been helpful for you. And uh, if so, please check out some of the other videos on our channel. Uh, we, we try to upload these every now and then uh, to provide some, some technical uh, knowledge and technical uh, feedback to the design and construction industry. So that being said, uh, thank you very much. My name is Michael Fiebig with Fiebig Architecture and hope you have a great day.